All right, so I've seen a bunch of people utilize the D-Shard mod in their GPUs, and many have seen it improve their thermal temps. Since NVIDIA's RTX 3080 is one hot card, I'd figured this could be a good test and see if we can improve the thermal temps for myself. Okay, so my card isn't quite the hottest, actually, as the ASUS Strix does provide a pretty thick heatsink along with some pretty good fans, coming in at 2.9 slots. I've done some videos in the past where gaming on the mesh panel yields pretty cool temperatures already, reaching 65 degrees Celsius max. I'm going to use some 120mm fans here, like the Arctic P12s, but before I do that, I'm going to need to rip off these fans. I've added Arctic fans to the bottom of this case in the NR200, and this looks like an ideal fit for the fans to sit up against the heatsink. For our first configuration, we're going to be utilizing just the Arctic P12 fans by themselves without any top exhaust, and having the CPU in an exhaust orientation. As you can see from the data set, with an auto fan curve and stock fans, we're pretty good already, coming in maxing out only at 64 degrees Celsius. Comparing this to the pole orientation, aka where the fans are exhausted air out of the case, it was just slightly higher with 4 degrees Celsius on average, but the push orientation where the case intakes fresh air, it was way hotter coming in at an average temperature of 67 degrees Celsius, which is almost 10 degrees hotter. Let's take a look at the normalized sound test at 40 decibels. The pole does come in much closer in temperature only with a degree difference on average, but with the max temperature it's 7 degrees hotter whereas the push orientation is actually a tad bit cooler comparing max temperatures. Dude, you're recycling hot air though. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm a Californian and I'm green conscious. What can I say? Let's add some of those sickle flow fans that came with the case and take a look at temperatures now. Wait a minute, this can't be right. The stock fans are still outperforming the push and pull orientation with six and nine degrees respectively when looking at max temperatures. Okay then, how about the normalized fan curve test? All right, that's not good either. The pull orientation maxed out at 56 degrees and the push orientation maxed out at 60 degrees, whereas the stock cooler is still only reaching 51 degrees maximum. But there's a gap between your heat sink, man. Okay, fine. I'll zip tie them on and try them with the top fan too. The only catch though is I can only test them in a push configuration because the tabs that hold the stock fans would prevent the fan from spinning in a pull configuration. With this setup, looking at the normalized test curve first, the stock fan is still cooler, looking at average temperatures being two degrees lower, whereas with an auto fan curve, it isn't much better, with the D-Shred mod being six degrees hotter. Okay, so what's the deal then? Are the Sue Strix fans that much better? Do I need to YOLO and just get a bunch of Noctua fans? Am I even testing this correctly? If you think I am, hit the thumbs button down below. If you don't think I am, drop a comment below as to why you think this did not work in my scenario. For me though, a couple things come to my mind. Fan orientation definitely seems to play a role whether you're pulling or pushing air out of the case, so perhaps having the CPU fan intake air might help this, and a side effect of deshredding gives a quieter operation even at higher fan speeds. Perhaps I should test a fully maxed 100% test curve only or even have a fan duct to improve airflow. But with all that being said, thanks for staying this long. Check out my Priya Slim fan test here. And if this is useful, drop me a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.